What's up guys, today I wanted to give you guys an analysis and prediction on the Manny Pacquiao versus Keith Thurman fight. So stay tuned. Uber up the styles like miles and shit. Like 60s funky worms with waves and perms just sending junkie rhythms right What's up guys, Carlo here and today I want to talk to you guys about this upcoming fight between Manny Pacquiao and Keith Thurman at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada next Saturday, a week and a half from now, July 20th. And this is a very intriguing fight for many reasons. Uh, you know, the very obvious reasons is Manny being 40 years old, Keith Thurman being undefeated, a natural welterweight at 147 pounds. Didn't look very good against Josecito uh, Lopez uh, coming off an injury in his last fight, but none nonetheless won that fight. Um, but there's a lot of questions that are going to be answered on Saturday night. And the build-up to the fight, the promotion, and the marketing has been great. There's been a lot of, of footage, training footage on both sides of the camp. You know, Thurman does a really good job of promoting himself. He does a lot of trash talking. You know, Manny is Manny. Everybody's seen Manny. He's kind of the humble guy. He doesn't talk a lot, just lets his hands fly and do the, uh, the hands talking for him. Um, so, you know, the marketing's been good. There's been a lot of good video footage of their training camps, what they've been doing. There's been talk, you know, about Manny looking explosive, great footwork, what we've known him for, for his hand speed, his combinations and just his overall movement and explosiveness. And then Thurman, you know, Thurman has been kind of criticized. People say in that his training looks like he's getting for, ready for a marathon. He's getting ready for, you know, doing a, a CrossFit, you know, tournament. He's getting ready for the Tour de France. I've, I've seen it all. I've heard it and I've seen it all from people that, you know, it doesn't look like he's getting ready for a boxing match. But whatever it is, you know, these guys are pro fighters. They're elite athletes. You know, they know, hopefully knows what's best for them. Uh, and what gets them in the top, tip top shape and condition getting ready for a fight. So, you know, I'll leave that up to them. That's, that's what they do, they're professionals. But with that being said, looking at both fighters, I'll start off with Manny Pacquiao. You know, we know what Pacquiao brings to the table. His last fight was against Broner, and before that was Lu Lucas Matisse. Um, he looked really good. You know, before that was a Jeff Horn fight, which a lot of people thought he got robbed because Horn was pretty much being a dirty fighter, you know, using a lot of headbutts, just being really physical, not really boxing, more or less just brawling and... And, and, and using a lot of dirty tactics as far as boxing goes. Matisse he looked really good. He looked explosive. Uh, but again, Matisse wasn't, you know, again, a prime Matisse. He wasn't um, the gamest opponent either. Um, a lot of people felt that Matisse could have could have lasted longer and, and, and presented a bigger challenge for Pacquiao. And then there was Broner. Broner, you know, Broner's Broner. He never, you know, he got, after that Maidana fight, I think a lot of people, you know, can agree that he just was never the same fighter after that. You know, he never doesn't let his hands go. He seems really apprehensive in terms of um, uh, uh, of setting up his offense, and he just uh, you know just doesn't seem there all there anymore as far as his boxing career goes and, and wanting to be motivated to to be great. So um, Manny pretty much dominated him in that fight. I was there actually in Vegas for that fight, and Manny pretty much dominated him. And I think everybody can agree that. So um, Keith Thurman um, coming off an injury fought Josecito Lopez. One thing to keep in uh, in mind with Thurman is he's a boxer puncher, but he's also known for his power. You know, one time that's his nickname. That's what he looks for. He likes to get that one time, you know, one punch knockout. But one thing to keep in mind is he hasn't had a stoppage or a knockout since 2013. That's six years since the last time he actually stopped somebody, and I believe it was Diaz that he stopped back in 2013. Who. Um, I don't think he knocked him out. I think Diaz was in between round and either the corner through the towel in or he just called, he just said he couldn't continue. So that was the last time that Thurman stopped an opponent. Ever since then, he's fought Luis Colazzo, Robert Guerrero, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, Josecito Lopez, and I believe that's it. Two of those guys being southpaws. So Guerrero and Colazzo were both southpaws. And I watched all of those fights. I, I watched the fight against Colazzo where, you know, Thurman got hit with that good body shot, and you can see that he got really hurt by it. And um, it seems that the awkwardness of the southpaw has caused him issues. You can see that he's very hittable. One other thing, a trait I noticed about Thurman is when he gets on the inside, he doesn't like to clinch. He's not somebody like that likes to grab onto his opponents. He likes to exchange. So he, another thing with him is if he does get hit with a good shot, he likes to fire back. So his his defense mechanism when he gets hit is to fire back. And I think that trait can kind of fall into the hands of Manny. He also likes to keep, keep a high guard. I, I noticed that Thurman, if he feels like he needs to get in a little bit more of a defensive posture um, to get to allow his, his opponent to let some shots off and to maybe rest a little, he'll put his, high, his hands in high guard and just kind of scrunch in and, and try to just 
uh, weather the storm again against a guy like Manny, that, that could be a bad thing. Now, Manny's never been really known as a one-punch knockout artist, although he's had one-punch knockouts against guys like Hatton. But that's not that's that's not that's more of the exception. That's not the rule. Manny's always been more of the volume, cut by a you know a death by a thousand cuts kind of boxer. He'll he likes to land multiple punches, and then by you know the later rounds, the ninth, tenth, eleventh round, that's when you'll start seeing the accumulation of damage over the period of time from the first round up to that point. So you know I think Manny, looking at a lot of his mitt work, a lot of his training, you can tell that he's really targeting the body. I know that he knows and his training camp knows that Thurman has shown in the past to be vulnerable at the body, okay? So I think that they're going to be targeting that a lot early on in the fight, targeting the body and really using angles to get Thurman flat-footed. Another thing you have to keep in mind with Thurman, for him to throw a lot of his shots, Thurman likes to load up, okay? So when he throws his shots, he really likes to load a lot of his shots are really looping shots. He likes to kind of swing. Again, when he gets in exchanges, he likes to really swing and try to land that really heavy knockout blow. But he has to have his feet set in order to do so. So me, I'm thinking what Manny's probably going to end up doing is he's going to work his angles and his footwork. If you see his training camp, he's really working on his cardiovascular workout, his stamina, to really be able to work angles and move around Thurman while landing a lot of punches and then going down to the body to, to kind of soften him up later down the road as the rounds go on. Keeping in mind that Thurman, his last fight against Lopez didn't look very good. He didn't look to be in the best condition. So with Thurman, you know, Manny's been knocked out. He's been knocked down. So there is that possibility that that could happen again. He can get caught with a good power shot that can either A, knock him down or B, put his lights out. So. I think Thurman understands that, and I think he's going to be, he's somewhat banking on his power and his size to overwhelm Manny. You know, looking at his training, he's doing a lot of high intensity interval training. He's doing a lot of sledgehammers, a lot of plyometrics, <clears throat> you know, sledgehammers, you know, ball throws, medicine ball throws, uh, you know, a lot of sprints, running, cycling. So a lot of high interval, you know, HIIT hit training. Um, in order to get his, his, you know, his conditioning up, but he's also working a lot on power. So I think Keith's game plan going into this is that he's looking to overpower Manny with his size and his power. Um, and I believe Thurman has only been down once in his career. I forgot who he fought, but he's been down one time, but he's never been knocked out. So, you know, if Thurman can be effective in terms of cutting off Manny or not allowing Manny to get in there and you know throw combinations, Thurman's going to have to be able to counter Manny uh, and be smart with his punch selection and not get wild with his punches, those wild swings. And if he does get hit with a good shot, don't get tempted to fire back right away because that's what that's what really going to open you up to Manny's onslaught. And Manny knows that. And a lot of fall, fighters have fallen into that trap of Manny, you know, throwing a combination. They want to fire back. And then, boom, here comes this weird uppercut, you know, right-handed, kind of like an uppercut hook from a weird angle that they don't see coming. And it clips them, and they're out or they're down. So I think that is going to be, if we do see a knockdown, I think that's where it's going to happen. I think Manny will catch uh, Thurman in between a, a wild swinging punch, kind of like how he caught Cotto. Back in 2009, was it 2009 2010 when he fought Cotto? But when he caught Cotto kind of lunging in and trying to swing, kind of fire back. And I think that's where Manny could find the most success. Um, Thurman's success will come from him being smart. He might have to change his game plan a little bit with Manny because he's never fought anybody like him. You know, I feel like Manny has more experience fighting guys like Thurman, where Thurman doesn't have much experience at all fighting a guy like Manny. So Thurman's going to have to be smart counter Manny, use his footwork, don't allow Manny to overwhelm him or get him into a corner, use his defense, maybe clinch a little bit, hold him when he gets too close to smother him, to smother his offense, kind of like what Floyd did in his fight against Manny. Um, and that's basically a way to effectively do it. He does also have the reach advantage, so using that will be a key. Using his jab to constantly keep Manny off of him, keep him out of range, keep him out of range, use your jab. 
use your jab, set them up, be unpredictable. So that's the way um, Thurman is going to be able to be successful. My prediction for the fight is I think it's going to go the full 12 rounds, and I think Manny's going to have a unanimous decision. I think it will go to decision. Um, Manny didn't stop Broner. He did stop Matisse, but again, Matisse was not really, to me, a game opponent. Um, but outside of that, I think Thurman has a good chin. Um, I think that Manny might score a knockdown or two, depending on how his game plan unfolds, if he can go to Thurman's body early and if he can catch him in the exchanges. But I think Manny wins this fight uh, by unanimous, uh, unanimous decision. So. Let me know what you guys think about this fight coming up, what your prediction, your analysis is. Make sure you guys put your comments down below in the comments box, and we'll talk about this soon. So I'll see you guys later.